We saw last week that all over the Houston region, the pools are being made ready for the influx of our babies this summer. Thousands will be heading to the local pool or the backyards or the ponds and lakes with the intention of having fun. But the reality is that for some this summer, it will be deadly. We know that on average about 300 drownings across the country. Texas, there have already been more than 25 drownings so far. Also, 88% of child victims were under some sort of adult supervision at the time. But on the other side of that, 88% decreased risk of drowning with swim lessons. Big lesson for everybody on that one. Joining me this morning, a group on the front lines are trying to prevent these awful numbers from going up. Rosemary Langfeld, the District Executive Director of Aquatics, Aquatics for the YMCA of Greater Houston. Kristen Beckworth is the Injury Prevention Manager for Texas Children's Hospital. And Al Bennett, the Community Liaison for the Houston Fire Department. Good morning to you all. Good to see you. Good morning. What scares you most when you, summer season comes up? What scares you? I think, you know, as students are getting out of school this week and next week, I think the biggest concern as pools will open up this weekend is just the fear of uh, lack of supervision. Those kids are going to have a lot more free time. They're not going to be in school. Parents are working, so it's access to water. And I think that's my biggest fear is access to water without supervision. You get a lot more accidents in the summertime anyway with uh, more kids being out? We definitely do. Um, at Texas Children's, we're a level one trauma center, and so we have a term. We call it trauma season. And it's kind of May through August, and it's we see a spike in injuries, and that's it's really a contributing factor is that our kids are, are out of school and there's a lot more free time with us without supervision. Al, does the fire department do anything more in terms of the summertime? I have more kids out, everybody on the trucks has to be more aware as well as all of us. Well, we do a component where we continue education to refresh ourselves and uh, what we try to do is be prevented by uh, instituting more literature to the community. Uh, making people more aware of the possibilities of what can happen in the summer season. This whole process, when we talk about summertime, the YMCA uh, typically talks about swimming all year round. I'm, I'm guessing that really increases during the summer months. Yes, we definitely want parents and families to understand that water safety has no season, but also that there is more access to pools in the summer, and so we need to be even more vigilant at that time. This whole process, when you talk about, I, I'm, I'm curious, injury prevention manager, that, that's been that's a whole department, is it not? It is a whole department, and um, a lot of children's hospitals have injury prevention programs. As I mentioned, we're a level one trauma center, and so our job as an injury prevention team, we've got a small staff of seven, but we go in the local community, we educate parents and kids about a variety of child safety topics, so car seat safety, bike helmets, um, and of course, water safety, and just our goal to give them education and prevent them from coming to us in the first place. Here at Channel 2, we see a lot of different scenes as we see on television too. We, they're either if, all kinds of different locations, pools, lakes, ponds, where there's uh, the problem that there is uh, a danger around certain kind of water. What kinds of things are proven to work to make sure that the children and adults are safer around water. Some of the proven strategies of, of course, I've already mentioned it, active supervision. If you're at a pool party, we want to make sure that families, parents are watching kids. No one's texting what seems to be big, socializing with other adults. You're solely watching the children in the water, um, making sure kids learn to swim. And so Ro Rosemary's going to talk about some of the phenomenal programs that the YMCA has. Uh, we'd like for families to be prepared in case there is an incident at the water. So learning CPR, making sure there's a phone nearby. Um, having life ja Coast Guard approved life jackets if you're going to the lake or to um, you know the beach. And I am going to talk to Rosemary about the swimming programs as well but that's one of the things that she just mentioned about CPR and some of the things you have to respond to. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things do you push to try to make sure that you can be prepared in case something happens? Well we push the fact that we want everybody to be CPR trained once. One of the reasons why we push that is because 90% of the time when you perform CPR it's going to be on someone that you actually know. So most of the time people might have the mindset that I'm going to take CPR in case somebody falls at the mall. It's not going to be that situation. It's going to be a situation to where, like she just said, you're either at a party or at the lake and one of your loved ones get um, um, succumbed by the water. So now that issue that you thought was going to happen doesn't happen. It's performing it on someone that you know and love. You know, what I found too, I've been in those circumstances, your own pulse is going pretty rapid as well. And it's difficult sometimes to even get a pulse on someone. That's You're trying true. to figure out, okay, is that their pulse or is that me? Uh, yes. It's, it really is a challenge. So the training really does pay off. It, it does. It does. It's almost like, um, like my mother used to tell me a long time ago, it's better to have something and not need it than to need it and not have it. Right. So the fact that you have this service and this ability to perform CPR allows you to know, like you said, 
oh, that's not my pulse, right. that's their pulse, or whatever the case is. Speaking of having and maybe not needing, and certainly this starts with swimming. Yes. Talk, let's talk about the, the programs, the kinds of programs the Y has across the board that can help with that. Yeah, so we have our traditional swim lessons. We're rolling out a new model this year, which I'm really excited about because it puts the swim safety first. So we're teaching the kids some basic swim skills, such as when they get in the water, how to get back out, because most drownings happen within 10 feet of the poolside. I, and I found that amazing. That's, that's an amazing statistic, 10 feet away. 10 feet away. So we're trying to get those kids back out, or if they can't get to the side, how to turn on their back until they can get to safety and call for help. And so we have those traditional swim lesson programs, but then we also have our outreach programs that are at no cost to those in the community and so those include our go for green where any child that doesn't pass the swim test gets free swim lessons to help them meet that goal and that's at, at any wide that yes all of our day camp locations across the greater Houston area and then we also have a program called safety around water where we go to local apartment complexes and at those apartment complexes we teach them basic swim skills and we also partner with a lot of the ISDs in the area because our goal is for every child in Houston to learn to swim. You know, a number of years ago there were just a couple of three or four or five apartments and now uh, the last thing I heard there was a lot more than that. Yes, total with the ISDs and the apartments will probably end up serving about 130. Right now we've got 117 committed. Uh, full disclosure, I'm on the board of their YMCA of Greater Houston so I know this problem and I know the challenge is to try to keep drownings from happening at all. Harris County, still the highest county in the state, yes, and that's yes. something that I know bothers everybody here. Definitely. What's the, what can you do to kind of make a difference? I, I'm guessing part of the issue is continuing to let people know what they can do to be safe. Yeah, the one thing that we try to push is the fact that it can happen to you. Mm. A lot of times people think that, yeah, that happens, but it will never happen to me. So one thing that we want to push is that, hey, be prepared in case this does happen to you by taking the CPR, by teaching your kids how to swim, by taking advantage of some of the free programs that are out there in the community. Uh, one of the things that we, we get a little lax with is that it's not me that they're talking about. We want you guys to understand, yes, it is you that they're talking about. Well, I'm gonna make sure that um, we put the information about the Y programs. I'm gonna put a link to your uh, uh, hospital and to the programs you have as well in the community. So people who are watching this program can go to the uh, Newsmakers website, get the information about all the different components that this coalition has and make sure that we can keep kids from drowning this summer. Thank, Thank you so much coming in. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank Hopefully you for having someone's us. gonna listen and we'll make sure that we can keep people from drowning and we can save lives. And later I'll put all those links to our website. Coming up, Dr. Jim Ray with MD Anderson Cancer Center leading the research effort to find the cure for Alzheimer's. The highlights of those efforts next.